Shout out Sniper T on the beat. Tamara to the break of dawn is on the rise with life on the forefront of the mind. So line for line, you can ride this brain train and you can change your station without even touching the dial. So relax, stay a little bit, but listen for a while. And whether you're bumping this in the whip or in a business fit, it's a meeting you won't want to miss. A meeting for a meal to feed the soul with words for the mind. So sit back, enjoy the ride. Time to take off, it's time to fly. Cause Tamara to the break of dawn is on the ride. voice all messed up already so um hey y'all um it's me Tamara (laughs) so you would be surprised at how early it is right now you could probably tell by my early morning voice I don't think I've ever recorded there's only been I, I take that back there's only been one other time I've recorded a hold on like I ain't even had coffee all the way yet but there's only been one other time that I've recorded an early morning episode which if y'all could hear the cat in the background Kobe B just in his own little whatever so y'all just gonna hear that I apologize but um the only other time I've ever recorded an early morning episode was the episode I did with Dequisha many months ago And that was because I had to go with her schedule. So I've never, ever chose to hop up and record. But I just woke up with a lot on my mind that I knew I wanted to talk about. And so I'm just like, okay, let me just get it out the way now. So I know this is not going to be a super long episode because your girl still got to work. You know what I'm saying? Um, But man, it has been the most just it's such a crazy season and if you've been listening you know I've been saying that and um but I guess I'll give y'all some insight into like what's going on right now but first let me tell you a couple things about me so fun facts about me that you probably can already tell is one I don't like waiting I will have this timetable of when things should happen And when they don't happen in the timetable that I think they should, I get frustrated. Then also, so I I hate waiting. Like, I hate it. You know what I'm saying? Then in addition to that, um, I don't like when I feel like I don't have control. Like when things are happening that are just out of my control. And it kind of depends on what it is. Because some stuff I'm kind of like, uh. But like stuff that... I really want or need or whatever that I'm doing my part. So I'm not saying when you're like, oh, I just don't have no control and you're not doing nothing. No, you're doing everything within your power to try to make it happen. And it still ain't happening. So it's just out of my control. I cannot stand that. And then hold on. And then one more thing. Um, I'm the kind of person that, so I don't know if you're familiar with the Gallup Strength Finder strengths, but in my top five, basically it gives you labels for the strengths that you already have. So I don't really, despite the fact that I have a psychology degree, I don't really get all off into personality tests and all that. But the Gallup Strength Finder test is one of the only assessments that I kind of like because really it just gives me language for what I already know. You know what I'm saying? So one of mine is, um, uh, what is it called? I, oh man, (laughs) I'm having a brain fart because I didn't even, um, developer, I think is what it's called. Hold up. Yeah. I, and that might not be, what it is and I have it somewhere but whatever basically I'll just describe it because I'm not fully awake I guess to really know what I'm talking about but basically it's like um I like to start somewhere and then see growth see progress stuff like that so growth progress all those things 
um, make me happy, which you should probably be able to tell that all of these things by my show, if you've been listening for a while, you know Sam. So right now, as you know, I am in the process of moving. Um, it has taken me way longer than I appreciate or would have thought it would take me to find a place. Um, things have shifted. Like initially I was looking for a place for me and both my daughters, then Kayliana, that's my oldest daughter. Janae is my youngest daughter. And it's funny because I remember when I used to never say their names on the show, but they've actually both been on the show. All of my kids have. And we're actually going to do another family episode with the four of us. But anyway, so now it's like, you know, it is what it is. But Kayliana, she wants to get her own place. And I, I feel like I've said that on here before, but... I can't remember right now. So it went. So what the stupid thing is that when I was looking for a three bedroom, the apartments would say, we don't have any three bedrooms available. We do have two and one bedrooms available. So when she said, okay, I want to get my own place and we, you know, talked it out so I could just not like I could necessarily stop her or would try to because she is 19 and I moved out when I was 19. But it's just understand where she was coming from, why. And then I've been kind of just giving her advice and whatever on making sure she's prepared for that. So shout out to her. She got a new job making significantly more than she was making at her previous job. She'll, she'll, she'll start there soon because we I had her write a budget, like all these things so that she's like actually prepared for adulthood she is such a planner i'm really really proud of her she sets goals and accomplishes them whatever her goals are so i was thinking that okay boom now that <laughs> shout out to autumn because she always says that at the beginning of her show but i was thinking all right cool now that I'm looking for a two bedroom this should be easy to find because before when i was looking for a three bedroom there were two bedrooms available, bruh. So I mean, I like, and I don't, I don't want to move back in an apartment or I almost want to move into a town or house, but it's set up. It's probably just wherever you live at apartment, cheaper deposit houses and town, depending on who's the landlord or leasing company of the townhome. Because if it's an apartment complex town townhome, then the deposit will be what you know similar to apartments. But if it's just a landlord or a housing leasing company or whatever, then they want full month's rent for the deposit. So it's like having to come up with more money. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what's kind of making me like, okay, well, now that I'm only looking for a two bedroom, but if I get a two bedroom, that's more exp like basically around what I was looking to pay at max for a three bedroom, then I could get a nice apartment and it won't be the bull that I dealt with at the previous place. Because like even being at my brother's house, his apartment is like some of the issues that I ha had with where I was staying are not a factor here. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't stink in the hallway. And for me, I have a sensitive nose. So like smells are always like, I'm the kind of person that when people are coming over, I'd rather it smell like something. So smell good. So scentsy, like I have stuff like that in my house or plug in air fresheners or whatever i rather it smell like something than smell like nothing even if the nothing doesn't stink if that makes sense so i'm just very big on smell so then when it stinks it's like uh and i just i couldn't stand that among other things and so i know and his i mean his apartment is nicer than mine was or whatever so i'm like okay i should be able to hurry up and get a place well no, you know, I'm if you're watching, you know, I'm still in his apartment because my uh canvas with my logo. Oh, let me add that I keep forgetting to have that in there. My canvas with my logo is not on the screen, you know what I'm saying? So, there's that. There's 
trying to find a place, um, being super beyond ready to just be in my own space again, not because of anything, but just because, you know, I mean, I really shouldn't have to explain that, but sometimes I don't want anybody to take it like it has anything to do with my brother or whatever, because it's not that at all. Hell, I'm sure he's ready to have his space back. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then if I'm honest, like I'm actually sleeping on the floor right now. And now I don't have to be sleeping on the floor because I do have an air mattress that I mean, I spent decent money on this air mattress for it to, you know, be comfortable. And I've slept on it before, like when we moved into the previous place and we didn't we couldn't get our furniture out of storage at first. Like it's not like I've never slept on it, but for whatever reason it is not comfortable. It's too soft. And I guess maybe I like my mattress is not a super soft mattress, but it's also not super firm either. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the floor is more comfortable than the mattress. So I'm sleeping on the floor right now. How to give you all the disclaimer because I don't want y'all to think it's this. I mean, it is a struggle, but it's not like. <laughs> because I can't afford an air mattress or something. You know what I'm saying? I had one. I brought it with me. I was sleeping on it at first. And it also could be, too, that I would blow it up, and then I would have to deflate it every day just because of where I'm sleeping, and I'm I'm not trying to make him feel inconvenienced. Or, and I'm just also the kind of person that I, like, order, so I really couldn't have left it inflated every day I also got kind of got tired of doing that because it was a self-inflating one so it's not like I had to blow it up but I just got tired of all that and I'm sure Kobe's happy that he don't have to hear the air uh, mattress motor anymore Kobe is his cat in case you didn't catch that earlier but uh, it's just so frustrating because now I'm calling about two bedrooms and places don't have anything available there are two that potentially could have something available within when I want to move but the thing about it is I go back and forth and it's funny because I've been talking to him about just a lot of stuff but this the reviews are similar to problems I had in my previous place so like management takes forever to fix stuff that's how it was where I was before now for serious things, I will, like when my bathroom flooded, I will say they did come right away for that. But I've seen these reviews on these two places where people's apartments have flooded. They didn't come fix it. Um, they have show you this really nice model because one of them I actually did get to look at a model unit. I really like the layout. Um, I like the square footage. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like to feel crowded or I'm not claustrophobic but I just don't like to feel crowded and I have to factor in the fact that I have to have space for working from home but regardless of working from home my podcast stuff I have to have space for my computer and recording stuff regardless of if I was working from home or not I liked all of that but I but they she wouldn't show me um, the actual unit I'd be renting. And I've read reviews where they'll show you this really nice model unit and you think that's what you're getting. And then, yeah, the layout will be similar, but like the updates or whatever they have in the unit will not be what's going on in the apartment that you actually rent. Um, they may not clean it, which I am another fun fact about me. What I liked about my last apartment, it is it was remodeled before I moved in. So I know that I was the first person to have lived in it under that. You know what I'm saying? It had been remodeled. So I also don't like moving into places where I know you can clean when you move in, but I feel like I shouldn't have to clean behind the people who previously lived there you should be doing that as the apartment management company and so many reviews I've read on just multiple different apartments, even ones that are not available, just are just terrible. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like now they're not available yet anyway. So 
anything can happen between now and then. But I'm tired of looking at places. I'm tired of calling people and being told no. So there's that, you know what I'm saying? Having to wait, I feel like I have no control over the fact that places just are not available. Then, uh, this place, and I, I called and on the voicemail it said, we're now leasing one and two bedrooms apartments. So I got so happy because I like fell in love with it. And then they really are just working from a wait list. And I actually did get put on the wait list there because I'm like, you know what? You never know. Who knows? Maybe by the time they call my name, my lease will be about to be up <laughs> wherever I go. I don't know. Cause I just love, love, loved the layout, just everything about the place. And I, it, I don't know. So it's like, there's that. I have no control over that. Cause it's not like I'm not doing my part. That's literally all I do. I mean, of course I work in other things too, but a lot of my time that maybe should be spent, I don't know, doing the last <laughs> little document or two that I probably should do, need to do to take clients has been spent on finding a place. Like so much time has been spent scouring the internet. That's a good word that I don't usually say. But anyways, so there's that. So then also... Um, and if you're not new, then you're, you know, familiar with, um, the struggles that my youngest daughter, Janae has had. Um, she's really struggled with grief, you know, the loss of their dad six years ago, he was murdered. Um, and since then she's just struggled and, struggle with their mental health and a lot of times trauma will kind of trigger if maybe you already were kind of predisposed to be able to have these issues because a lot of stuff when it comes to mental health issues is genetic like if your mom has mental health issues it shouldn't be surprising when you kind of do you know what I'm saying that's where a lot of people who are like have faith, like such as myself, faith is my faith in uh, and my relationship with the Lord are important to me. And I say it like that because I wouldn't consider myself a religious person because that's more built on just traditions and do's and don'ts, though I do go to church, you know what I'm saying, which I guess could be considered religious. I do read my Bible. But I don't do it for the sake of religion. I do it for the sake of my relationship. But people talk about breaking generational curses. And that's one of the things I've really prayed over my kids for a long time. And people talk about it even outside of uh, faith, 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 blah, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. People say it. They just say it differently. That's the interesting thing about a lot of stuff is it's kind of like the same underlying meaning. It just is different verbiage. Um, I'm trying to think of, and they may say generational curses, but either way, passing stuff down, you know what I'm saying? But she is actually currently in the hospital, in the psychiatric part of the hospital. She's been there since... Friday, so I don't know what day you'll listen to this, but whatever. She's been there at this point uh, five days, you know what I'm saying? And she asked me to take her. So in that regard, because self-harm has been a huge thing with her, I'm glad she asked me to take her instead of just self-harming, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, everything that was going on leading up to that, it has me nervous for her coming out because they're not, it's not a long term place. I was already considering and talking to her therapist about a residential treatment place that's a little bit more intensive because I 
have done everything that I can do as a mom to try to support her. And really, I'm just I'm just a mom. You know what I'm saying? I'm not equipped to really, I feel like, give her what she needs or I don't know. But it's also she has to, in, for her, in some things, it's she has to decide she wants to participate with the recommendations of her therapist because we I feel like I'm caring I've been carrying her and this is part of what happened Friday is we actually got into an argument me holding her accountable to some of her choices and I like I told her I'm carrying you and I am more than willing to support you and do whatever I can to try to help you and she should know that because this whole almost past year has been catered to her you know what I'm saying I would work long days to flex my schedule to go to different appointments and just switch her school just all these things trying to help her that's just mentioning a couple little things the working long hours things is crazy because I would start at my normal start time And then have to take a, you know, extended lunch for appointments and this, that, and the other. And then I'm having to come back and work late hours to get all my hours in because I really wasn't trying to use PTO. Then it got to a point where I got, I was tired of these long ass days. So then I've basically gone through all of my PTO for the most part now at this point, again, appointments, school meetings, just all these things. Um, It's been insane. So I know she wouldn't say I haven't supported her, but I just, like I told her, I feel like I'm carrying you and you're kicking and fighting against me. And so I can't do this anymore. You know what I'm saying? So there's that, you know what I'm saying? Then there's the brand, the brand that by the time this airs, you probably saw my little, I don't want to say commercial, but just this little video where I kind of just showed you the logo for the tagline. It's not the actual brand name or any of that because I'm I'm being very strategic about how I bring about interest in what I'm doing, but I'm not releasing that yet because it hasn't launched. But I guess you could call this the pre-pre-launch. Originally, I had told y'all y'all would see the shirt on podcast happy hour, which I am going to wear it, but my, uh, Tumblr came in and it's funny. It came in yesterday and I like needed it to come in that day. Cause I needed another fun fact about me is, and we talked about this on, I think it was a podcast happy hour. And I don't remember who was hosting or who asked this or why this came about. But one of the things I said was that I'm the kind of person that when I'm going through, whereas most people will take a break, like not create content or whatever, me, I am the kind of person that I need to now, of course, take breaks. I'm not doing this to avoid dealing with my stuff, which y'all should be able to tell. I'm not someone who necessarily avoids stuff. I may not realize stuff right away but once I realize whatever I process stuff like my whole show is built around that but I'm the kind of person that accomplishing things and still being able to like the fact that I haven't missed the episode the fact that I haven't missed a blog now Monday's blog was super late not because I didn't feel like writing but because it was such an insane day with phone calls all day with the hospital. I've talked to so many different people and people they referred me to and just all this stuff. Then visiting her, I have been able to visit her every day since she's been there. So I appreciate that because, I mean, we're used to seeing each other all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I do have, despite whatever, I do have a good relationship with my kids. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I've been able to visit her every day and all that. So the blog was like super late. It didn't actually air or publish until 
like eight o'clock at night but the whole point is it's still published you know what i'm saying i haven't missed any of my creative deadlines now getting this cup this tumbler yesterday because it's like this little okay here's another checkpoint of we're getting that much closer you know what i'm saying and all of that is it's really important to me it really keeps me going the snatch 40s journey it's been interesting i haven't worked out in probably a couple weeks i'll get back to it my sleep i was like barely able to get up just drained all these things so it's kind of like I've been just focusing more on my eating, which actually did get off track for a while. And I think I think I might be the kind of person that can't eat red meat anymore because and it's not because I ever said I'm not going to. I just don't rarely. I mean, yeah, don't often. And mainly when I eat meat, it's usually chicken or seafood you know certain kinds of seafoods but mainly chicken and then I got in and it could also be that it was fast food but for like a little while maybe like three weeks or something I was just like out of control with fast food and because it was just convenient and whatever and then I noticed my ankle started swelling up and that's what made me like, wait, what the hell is going on? And then I actually checked my blood pressure and my blood pressure was high. And I've never been a person that has had blood pressure is issues. I know, you know, there are members of my family or a member of my family that does have high blood pressure, but it's not something that to my knowledge, a ton of people have. But either way, all of these things let me know, okay, you cannot, and even it got to a point where, you know, my brother lives on the third floor, ma'am, and I, that might be pretty common, but I feel like I was at that point more out of breath than normal coming up to the top of the stairs. I'm sure it was stress. I'm pretty sure it was what I was eating too, which Fast food tends to be saltier, so it could maybe not be the red meat. It could be, I don't even care. Either way, I had to get myself back together, and so I've mainly been focusing on eating right now. I know I will get back to working out pretty soon, but again, switching how I was doing things to try to cater to force my daughter to work out because that was a recommendation of her therapist because you know them endorphins for those of you that do work out you know it's that natural high you feel good you know what i'm saying that threw me completely off because i started working out in the evening so that's where it started started working out in the evenings when i really need to be working out in the morning and then it got to this point where i couldn't even get up in the morning and just not because of working out just because of being tired so i'll get back to it you know what i'm saying but I've really been focusing on my eating and just even that little bit of not eating the stuff I don't have any business eating anymore. My ankles are back to normal. And it's so funny because one day I was sitting here talking to Janae and I'm like, bruh, look at my clump ankles. And she was like, yeah, I noticed that. But I didn't want to say anything because I didn't know if that's how your ankles normally are. And I'm like, girl you know my ankles ain't never no except maybe during the end of pregnancy when you start swelling up but yeah it has been it has been crazy it has been but there's still good things happening you know what I'm saying I'm and that's why I think that's what makes me celebrate the good milestones whereas maybe I might not be posting like, ooh, I got my office space, you know, stuff like that. And maybe I might be because in some ways, I feel like I, when I talk about a lot of stuff on here, I want, it's almost like public accountability. Like if I'm talking about it, then it needs to be shown for certain things. 
that I'm actually about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not just saying I'm doing this just to say I'm doing it because people do get on their shows and just say anything or not necessarily get on their shows just in life. People, social media say all this stuff. Well, mine's a little different because I have a, actually have a platform where I talk about my life every day or every week or whatever. So um, celebrating these milestones really helps me, I guess, feel good because if it reminds me that I am accomplishing and getting closer to my goals. Um, I'm really excited for this brand to launch because really... And I think I talked about this last week, but if not, like I birthed this idea in, I think it was November or December is when I actually came up with the idea. So to see it finally, you know, we have the logos and I'm just waiting on a couple little final things, but to see like, man, this is really going to launch soon. It's very surreal, even just to be able to put something like the video that it will have be on there by the time this airs with the um, Tumblr and just, just to let people get a a little teaser of, Hey, this is what this part of it looks like. Like, I don't know. It's very crazy because again, I really think it's something that again, as I said, it's starting off uh, tailored or, I don't, I don't want to, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to say, but it's, it's starting off kind of being focused on black women. And, um, I just think it's something that I think people will embrace, appreciate. Um, I don't know. And so I'm, I'm really excited. It's just crazy how this whole idea came about and, now how it's it's more than just an idea like it's actually going to be and a whole company was created simply to have a good foundation for this brand so it's like i don't know it's crazy but um that's kind of where my life is at um it's interesting though because also the whole i like to keep doing the things that i normally do if uh, y'all might not really know because I don't think I've really talked about it much on here, but I don't really wear makeup. I don't, I ain't gonna say I don't really, I don't, I don't do eyeliner, mascara, nothing. Now, when I record, sometimes I will do a translucent powder, so it's almost, it's not like I'm putting baby powder on my face, but it's like it's not, it has no color. And the only reason I do it is because. Sometimes when I look at myself, I feel like my face is shiny and that's always been a huge pet peeve of mine. Like I'm very much in, have always been into taking care of my hair, skin and nails. Like some people care about, you know, labels and brands and all this stuff. Those are the things that I've always cared about and being like them being healthy, I should say, or my nails being done or whatever. So, um, outside of that, the only thing that's ever been important to me is my brows. Like that would be the only, if you want to say makeup that I would ever do every morning is I would do my brows. Well, then I got ombre brows, uh, over a, about a year and a half. Um, yeah, coming up on two years ago. And so then now I don't even have to do that. The only thing I need to do is just clean up underneath and I just do that myself. Well, I had kind of, I can't, I don't know the last time I did that. Like, that's how I kind of got away from certain things. And I finally took the time to like clean them up. And even just something as simple as that just like makes me feel good about myself because it's something that I normally stay on top of. You know what I'm saying? And it's usually, and also, Probably if I was in my own space, it'd be a little different because I'd have my stuff out to, you know, have a have it set up. But right now everything is kind of in travel stuff and then I pull it out and blah, blah, blah. So I guess I say all that to say self-care is so, 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 
so important to try to stay on top of when you have a lot of stress or whatever going on. That's my encouragement to you this week. Whatever your self-care is, whatever is important to you, whatever makes you feel good, I should say it like that, just something that's just for you. Like me staying on top of my brows is a me thing. Even me eating healthy because it makes me feel good because I feel like crap. That's probably why I was so damn tired because I was eating all that crappy food. That's the whole reason why for me, I change my diet. Like it's not even about the snatch forties journey, even though we know that's a journey, but it's more so about, I don't like feeling lethargic and that's how I would feel. And I can't feel that way. I have to be energized, sober minded. You know what I'm saying? Um, not saying I don't drink, but you know what I mean? Like my mind has to be clear, focused because of all the things that I'm trying to do. I got to have the energy to do the things that I got to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like self-care is so important always, but do your best to try to at least do one little thing. If that's all you have, cause I trust me, I know like, man, when I'm really going through showering can be a struggle. You know what I'm saying? Just like, to be honest, because, and it's not like it's, it's depression or whatever is setting in. That's when I know I'm like at my lowest. I'm not saying I was there, but I've been that low and really grief is when I started noticing a shift in a lot of things because prior to that, that was never a struggle because I've always been a pretty, like I said, smells are important and all that stuff. So I, I've always been a clean person, but when I'm at my lowest of lows, getting up in the morning, you know what I'm saying? All these things are a struggle. So when I say self-care, I'm not saying go get massages and do all this extravagant stuff, although by all means do that. But what I'm saying is remember the little things like me doing my brows just made me so happy. You know what I'm saying? Remember the little things me. Um, I don't know. I can't cause that's the only like self care thing I've done <laughs> recently or whatever. Um, but nails for me is self care. Um, I used to once a month get massages, actually. I'll probably need to go back to that at some point soon. But yeah, just do something that's for you by yourself, even. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't, nobody else has to be there. You know, like, invest in yourself because you can't control. I told y'all what I'm going through. I can't control any of that. I can't, like, And it's, yeah, with the business, it's like, there are other things that are going on. Cause I also spent time helping my mom clean up the trees that had got cut down in her yard from the storm we had last weekend or the weekend before or whatever. And so we didn't have power that, so like there's other things that are like slowing down the progress of me getting stuff done. But right now it's like every day after work, I leave to go see my daughter or on the weekend, I make sure I go see her and there's other stuff I'm having to do. So it's like, I can't really control sometimes the timing of when things happen, such as the office that I have. Um, We were supposed to originally have it in June. And then we didn't, couldn't get access until July, but you know what? It was the perfect timing for just whatever, when it actually happened. This brand, I told you I birthed the idea in like November, December, and it's July, about to be August. You know what I'm saying? And even with the logo and all that, I started talking to the logo, the graphic designer before, before I, uh, changed my podcast logo. Like that wasn't even 
I wasn't even thinking about doing that. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm glad I did. I love what he did. I love the animated thing at the beginning of all my YouTube videos. But that just shows you how long this stuff has been happening. So when y'all are seeing me, these teasers and these whatever, even starting my company took a few months. You know what I mean? So these are all the things that are going on. And as always, take care of your mental health, take care of your emotional health, self-care, 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 take care of your physical health, all the ways, get sleep, eat the food that's going to make you feel good. Um, take care of your spiritual health. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, had a, a moment at church Sunday. I haven't, I don't think I've ever had a moment like this where, um, long story short, cause I gotta go, but you know, you, you maybe hear stories about where somebody's speaking and you, and they're speaking directly to you, to your scenario and, and you feel it in a way that, you know, it's God or it's whatever. And I had a moment like that in church on Sunday during worship, like as they were transitioning songs and he was talking about the, the song that we were about to sing. And, um, man, I was crying my eyes out and I'm not a person who really cries. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying I don't cry, but usually I can control myself to maybe cry later usually most of my crying happens when I'm alone about trying to go to bed and maybe processing my thoughts that's where most of my crying happens but I was just crying I couldn't even stop but it was so freeing but but not just to get the crying out but just to feel seen because this is why I posted or tweeted about it feels good to just celebrate myself because even the people that celebrate with me, the people that already saw the logo that maybe even know the name of the brand and all these things. Yes, there are people that celebrate with me, but it just it don't. They can never be. <laughs> excuse me, as excited as me or I don't know. Their response is not what's going to make me feel good. My own sense of whatever. I'm proud of myself. You know what I'm saying? For multiple different things. Forget the brand. Forget whatever. It's just the fact that I've kept content going despite what the hell I got going on. It's the fact that I've gotten up and gone to work every day despite what I got going on. It's the fact that, hell, I'm my mind is still sane and I haven't just given up on life because man the last six years since their dad was killed it's just it's not just because of that but the things that have happened since that have just been things I never in life that I would walk through aside from him being killed never thought that would be a thing so I don't know you know take care of yourself spiritually we all have a spirit um, and also, you know what I'm saying? Take care. Make sure you have healthy relationships. Don't be out here toxic. Don't be out here, you know, not dealing with your issues, blaming everything on everybody else. Take accountability. You know what I'm saying? There are some things that I realized with my daughter where I've been enabling her coming from a good place of not wanting to further trigger her. But what I realized is that's actually been more harmful because it's caused her to not feel like she has to deal with stuff. And I think that might have been part of why she was like, you know what, I need to get some help because I and it's not like I cussed her out or anything like that because I don't cuss my kids out. But I did like go off. I, I was very firm and it wasn't anything that was belittling or anything like that. And I'm clarifying because I don't talk to my kids like that. But it was very much holding her accountable in a way that I had not been. So I know there are things where I have been unhealthy as a parent 
calling myself trying to be healthy, maybe coddling her too much because of what she's been through. So again, healthy relationship dynamics, that looks all kinds of ways. There's no cookie cutter approach to anything. Whatever it is, once you have that revelation that you need to do something different, do it. Because sometimes we just don't know. You know what I'm saying? But when you have that light bulb, mom- light bulb moment, man, move on it. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I got for y'all. Thanks so much for listening. I guess this was longer than I thought it would be. But I will see y'all, talk to y'all, all that stuff next week. Bye. Ladies and gents, this concludes transmission. Tune in next time for a whole new edition. Another adventure and mission to share, be heard, and clarify the vision of this whole new world for... Tim.